Welcome to the quick hitter version of Dave's Front Office. I'm Dave Wohl. Our featured discussion this week is with Hall of Famer Jerry West. Back in his day, training techniques were quite a bit different than they are today. In your career, you actually averaged, I had to look this up, you averaged 39 minutes a game in your career, 41 in the playoffs. But when you came in, there was no real understanding, Jared, of how to take care of your body, you know, <laughs> physically for the rigors of season after season. And, you know, it's definitely changed. And, and when I look back on it, I, here's how I always looked at it. I said, nutrition was basically steak and potatoes. Fuel was kind of coffee and cigarettes for some guys. Hydration was the six packs of beer they gave you in the locker room. Conditioning was chasing fast women in the bars after the game. Load, load management was how much do I need to pack for a week on the road. And rest and recovery was the summer. And that was the, about the extent of what they knew about training and nutrition and even taping your ankle. And you see what's available to players now. And you talked about it a little earlier. The medical stuff has improved dramatically. The, there's customized customized food plans and training plans. They get customized shakes and vitamins and blood analysis and things like this. If you were playing today, how much would those advantages, including the charter travel and the better hotels and all the other stuff, how would that have made you a better player? I mean, would that have protected you more against some of the injuries? I mean, can you see how that would have given you some greater advantages than you had? Well, David, you know, one of the things that I, I'm really, uh, when I look back and I look at, you know, you look on YouTube and all these training drills for players, uh, you know, as, as a player, um, I don't, you know, I didn't weigh enough. I could eat anything I wanted to, but it certainly wasn't, it was very much like you mentioned. I didn't go out of my room. I was, uh, I stayed in all the time. Uh, uh, you know, I was taught in college, not, I didn't, I didn't drink, uh, I probably in my life, I probably maybe drank a case of beer. I hate beer. I'm not a drinker. And uh, I didn't I didn't enjoy going anywhere. I was painfully shy. And it took a while, David, for me to really try to find a way just to get sleep. Uh, you know, you have roommates. Uh, and for a while, I had one roommate who was out. He'd come home at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and it had to be picked up at seven by uh, by a bus to go to the hotel and catch a first available flight. But I think the one thing that just to have people around you that really cared about uh, making you a better athlete and giving you more um, giving you more information about how you could treat your body. I had two injuries. One of them you could do nothing about, the broken nose. I had nine of those. Right. But I didn't miss games, David. You'd be bleeding like crazy. They let you play. Yeah. But I had a chronic hamstring pull, and I'm sure I wouldn't have had that. Uh, another thing is strength. I weighed my first year in the league. I weighed 172 pounds. I look like Ichabod Crane. I still do probably, but – uh, I look like Ichabod Crane with the long, really 40-inch sleeve length. Uh, uh, and, you know, your body, I was skinny, uh, uh, wiry strong because of how I lived my life, running and climbing trees and being in the forest all the time. I, uh, but I, I didn't have any idea about how you treat your body. And I remember the only, basically, I had two injuries that, uh, a chronic hamstring pull that I missed a lot of games in my career, David, a lot. I only played, I played less than a thousand games in my career and I averaged over 27 points a game. Um, as it was told me <laughs> and because I don't pay attention to it, but I averaged, I think four or five times in my career over, over 40 games, uh, playing 40 games a minute. Um, I hated to come out of games. I just like to play and like to compete. And I know it's a selfish, uh, selfish sounding, but, uh, uh, but the one thing that would have helped me that the stretching, the weight training, uh, and later on, certainly in the off season where you didn't have to work, you could go and work on the things that you're weakest at. And mm -hmm. certainly my ball handling was not my strength period. It was not, you weren't going to steal it but it wasn't something that I felt really comfortable with and particularly in my left hand. Uh, but there was a lot of ways that they could have helped. And I marvel every day I go into a, a facility uh, today to see the equipment they have. You have a, you have a different specialist in there every day for, if you've got a, you've got a sprained uh, 
if you've got a hangnail, they have somebody there for that. Massages, stretching. But I think the stretching part of it would be the part I would enjoy most. After you've done your preliminary work about getting bigger and stronger, uh, where it applied to basketball. Weight training, after a while, I, I would not have wanted to do that. I just wanted to maintain where I was. But I do, I do that stuff today, and I'm 82 years old. I do that today, and I, you know, I say to myself all the time, oh, my gosh, when, when I watch Allie work with these kids today, it's pretty remarkable as specialists, and all the players should be thankful that they have that at their disposal. Well, I think one of the interesting things, because you were saying, is that you know, now – it, with a hamstring injury, they would have had a hamstring rehab protocol for you. They would have, you know, been working on balancing out your body and everything. And, you know, you mentioned, we mentioned Jamal Murray. One of the things I thought that was a factor in him getting better too, is he said he put on 12 pounds, you know, working out during the, the, the shutdown. And all of a sudden you could see he looked stronger. And as you were saying, you know, that strength comes into effect, driving to the basket, defensively getting over screens and stuff like that. And back then, you also didn't have development coaches. And one of the questions I was going to ask you was, you know, you were kind of on your own. Like, okay, how do I figure out how to get better? You know, now you'll have programs from your development coach. You can go into every facility. You can use a hand scan to get in at midnight. There's a development coach that meets you there. Players can get help from a coach every single day, 365 days a year. As you were coming up, you were basically on your own. And even to the 80s and 90s, there weren't always dedicated facilities and there weren't really development coaches. So, you know, how did you figure out what do I need to do to get better? How do I, what drills do I do? Well, David, you know what? I was kind of a copycat and I, I watched people that I thought athletically might replicate who I was. But they, some little things that they would do that I thought were pretty cool and they didn't look too hard to do. Um, uh, so I kind of copied that. But uh, the other th the things that, that, that to me, uh, what was my greatest learning period, uh, t to me, my mind really helped me a lot. And I'll tell you why. Because I could watch games um, and I could watch how teams played and particularly people I played against that I was going to compete against. And I, I saw a lot of this my rookie year. And uh, watching those helped me get better. But just the experience of playing against these players, and I think if you got to the point where you could hear these players say, hey, take it easy on me tonight, <laughs> that, that knew – then you knew you would ride. And then also I think the – probably the crowning piece of it was being named to the all-pro team. And, um, you know, at that time, you're, the writers – this wasn't a popularity contest. Your peers voted on it. And um, I, um, that was an honor for me uh, to be included in the best names in the league. And it tells you that you've gotten better, even though you were really young. And you know, I knew there was a huge deficit for me to overcome, right. even being able to play at an all-star level, much less an all-pro level. And so I continued those same things. And then, as I say, I would, if I were a player today, oh, my goodness. Uh, I would have relished um, going in a gym and having someone to explain to me or show to me how I might be able to make, it, make myself a better offensive player. You know, I miss that part, Jer, of having guys tell me to take it easy on them, that somehow I missed that part in my career. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it, it's flat, it was flattering to have players or all-star players tell you that. And that oh, happened yeah. a number of times. If you'd like to hear more from Jerry West, Check out the full version of Dave's front office from Pure Hoops Media.